Good morning, everyone. It's always exciting somehow to start these meetings, even though we are such professionals, of course, and so used to this space. But it's exciting to see everyone coming in and to see all these little windows and to see all of you. Welcome to this two hours workshop here in Bergen. Definitely uh, Bergen still in the spirit, but I have to say with some regret that we are all online. Once again, in the frame of the City of Bergen International Summit, hold yesterday very successfully, and the Bergen International Festival that also very successfully opened yesterday uh, its festival. As you can see from the duo of these co-organizers of this meeting, we will once again speak about cities and festivals. Because what we believe as European Festivals Association, and not only us, but probably shared with you, is that festivals and cities are twins. They are both at the service of their citizens, audiences and visitors of a city. I think that more and more cities present themselves as cultural cities and cultural destinations, even as festival cities, which somehow associates them to a vibrant location and a creative hub. Today, in this meeting, we invite us all to brainstorm on possible joint actions and see how festivals and cities can better embrace their mission together. Seven cities worked on what we call in our working title a festival city seal in the framework of the project festivalfinder.eu. These cities are Bergen, Krakow, Ljubljana, Ghent, Edinburgh, Rotterdam and Belgrade. They propose to be recognized as festival cities and to commit themselves as cities to the life of festivals and to a collective process of building a festivals community within a city. So our question today will be how can such a sea look like? How can it be used? And above all, how can it be useful for festivals and for cities? So today we are going to be all together in plenary for the first part of the meeting for a little hour, interrupted by a very brief five minute speed dating, as you can see, to break the ice. And then we will break out in different breakout groups. We call them in a new word, bus rooms because we need to be innovative in these times, don't we? Uh, before we come back to plenary. As always, a little protocol, please switch on your camera. It's an interactive workshop that we plan to have together. Mute yourself when you don't speak and please use the chat as you already started to do so for any kind of exchanges within in particular the first hour of the meeting. Uh, and last but not least, be aware that we record uh, this meeting. So let's start. We start in old technological terms with a little video message of the city of Bergen, our host. A strong example of work and commitment, I have to say, to the arts and to the need and the benefits of exchanges between festivals and cities on a European level. And I'm very pleased that Katrin Nertfetz, Commissioner for Culture of the city of Bergen, uh, is explaining this, of course, in a bit better words to us. Dear EFA, Festival Cities Project Partners, and all other participants to this workshop, welcome to the city of Bergen. Either you're with us physically or digitally. It's a pleasure for the municipality of Bergen to be hosting the Festival Cities Partners meetings and today's workshop in the Festival Finders Alive Now project. I'm sorry I can't be with you live. However, I look very much forward to hearing more about your work and results afterwards. The city of Bergen values its diverse and rich arts and cultural scene. The arts and culture are important for our democracy and the freedom of speech. It facilitates the individual's development of self-esteem and self-understanding and is crucial to creating a collective identity and belonging. The COVID-19 situation has highlighted these points. It's been a priority for the city government to support our artists and our cultural organizations in Bergen during the pandemic. I hope for a strong and vital cultural sector coming out of this situation. And I'm glad that people are eager to go out again and experience the arts and culture together. The fields of arts and culture accommodates a large number of meeting grounds that contribute to participation and provide space for inclusion in the larger community. Our festivals are such meeting grounds and they have a major societal and economic impact in Bergen. 
In addition to creating jobs and supporting the cultural industry, they also give the city a comparative advantage in attracting visitors and people who want to live here. The festival market has become increasingly important for Bergen as a part of our cultural life. Since the beginning of the 2000s, there's been a steady increase in the number of festivals and their audiences, and the festivals are becoming increasingly professional and organized. The festival format works very well here in Bergen, and the festivals present both innovation and are ensuring the city's relevance and attractiveness, both nationally and internationally. The festivals also have an important role as tradition bearing and identity building and always evolving arenas in our town. In addition to the goals of being an inclusive, vibrant and interesting city, Bergen also aims to be the greenest and most sustainable city in Norway, highlighting Bergen as a driving force in the Western region. Our festivals are an important part in obtaining all these goals. And I'm very glad that many actors uh, and organizations are doing good work already. With these few words, I wish you a fruitful workshop and all the best in your work to stimulate and keep developing our festivals and our wonderful cities around Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much to the city of Bergen, to Katrin Nerdfett for these words. Uh, next year, I hope we will all be there live and we will experience the opening of the festival, which gives me the chance to give you, Anders, Anders Bayer, CEO and Artistic Director of the Bergen International Festival, the floor. I said that the city of Bergen is our host and we are grateful, of course, for this intense and strong collaboration for years, but we wouldn't have it without our member and festival uh, the International Festival of Bergen itself, which is our backdrop and the reason why we are actually here. So I'm very happy, Anders, that you can share your thoughts from the festivals for point of view, what impact the arts and arts festivals can have on the quality of life of the community in the city. The floor is yours, or the screen. Thank you, Catherine. And good morning, everyone. So lovely to see all these faces on the screen and uh, always nice to be with colleagues and, and, and discuss uh, life and art with you. So thank you for that. I will be with you uh, um, only for, uh, yeah, during my presentation and uh, I'm very unpolite and, and will leave you afterwards because of, of things I have to do today. So I, I also wish you a, a good workshop uh, later on. So um, yes, um, I mean, global trends in uh, urban living is rapidly changing uh, and the value of arts and culture are in increasing. And uh, this, is, this is not news to, to this forum. We all, we all know that. Um, but I remember back in, in times where we uh, were outlining the first strategy uh, uh, some years ago for, for, for the festival, seeing this, uh, these changes, this societal changes. And, um, and we, we, um, we discussed these changes and we discussed uh, the current um, trend of changing patterns in both the area of consumption and societal structure, um, providing great opportunities for the festival in the years to come. And we also discussed um, these basic questions uh, like uh, which impact does an arts festival or the arts have to the quality of life and, and the community uh, in a city. So um, the Bergen International must, as I believe we all think in, in this forum that, uh, that we should be a part of these changes, taking advantage of the opportunities these changes bring with them so that in, uh, in the years to come, the festivals will have even more ambitious and innovative profiles to the delight of all people. So now we are living in basically a new reality and there's reason to believe that the world will never be the same as it was before uh, COVID-19 turned, um, turned everything up side down. So the, con the consequences of, uh, 
of having uh, to keep our, uh, our distance from uh, one another and uh, avoid large gatherings are far reaching. So uh, culture is far from the only area affected by the crisis and, and the reservation it has given rise to, but it is perhaps the area where the differences between before and after are greatest. So um, now as we gradually begin to, to get the feeling that the crisis can go on for, for years, there are reasons to think more deeply about how cultural life can uh, not only survive, but actually thrive in this new reality. A reality we can ex expect to persist in one way or another, even when the crisis is officially over, because at the global level, ma mankind has been so affected and alarmed by the, our collective behavioral patterns will certainly be changed, maybe for, for a whole generation. So the ideas, the creativity, the skills and the visions are all there amongst European festivals. We have the players, we have you out there. We have an enormously power together, but our skills have to be brought more into play with another. Uh, true societal, societal development takes place through radical and generous cross-pollination of my uh, ideas. My new word is cross-pollination. It's something with with plants and trees giving uh, giving fruits, uh, different fruits on the same tree. I like this picture of, of, of you know, um, uh, of this uh, cross, cross uh, thinking in a way. That is exactly what should be the basis for achieving our new uh, goals in, on European level, to navigate through the crisis in cooperation with others based on a strong community based principle that what we do must also benefit others. Thank you, Catherine. So true, Anders, so true. And I think there is no better word or in a way keyword to express what I think Berg International Festival and EFA, European Festivals Association, now for 70 years are doing in the spirit of collaboration, of cross-pollination in a European context, try to be and to come together uh, and inspire and exchange with each other. I think it's more needed than ever. That's why networks exist. That's why collaboration exists. Uh, that's why, in a way, the impact of globalization is, is faced in one or another way. Uh, IFA's online festivalfinder.eu uh, follows actually the motto that in Europe, the arts are just a festival away. And I would like to put these words now into the mouth of a European institution colleague, not colleague, but a European institution representative that is with us and with the work uh, of IFA for so many years and is following the work of, of festivals and knows as much as we all do as audience members as well, how important uh, arts and festivals life in Europe is and how important the local dimension for the European project and for the uh, benefits of the European project is. So I'm happy Barbara Gessler, head of units Creative Europe, at the European Commission at DG EAC is with us, maybe to give us some of these uh, feedback insights of the work that we are doing on the local level in a European framework and how this is reflected uh, on the European policy level of the European Union. Barbara, I'm very happy you're with us, as you know. Thank you very much, Katrin. Hello, Anders. Uh, nice to see you and all of those that I see virtually but don't really see which is a pity but uh, i'm sure uh, things will change eventually and we will be able to see each other live uh, and uh, and um, witness the beauty of uh, of all of those places from where you stem uh, uh, and which contribute also to to the beauty of this network yes um katrin you 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 put it uh, you put it very nicely also uh, in the invitation um europe is uh, is a, is the is a festivals continent uh, and uh, the festival finder 
uh, EU, the, the, the motto that you have found for this festival, Finder, in Europe, the arts are just a festival away, uh, really acknowledges uh, this, uh, this secure statement, if I, uh, if I can put it like that. And, uh, uh, and you, you don't have to convince me, you said it as a, uh, as a commission representative, but also as a, in my personal capacity, of course, to, to stress that in our belief, festivals and cities are twins and belong uh, very much together because um, they, they kind of bring together this need uh, to experience arts and culture in a community and, uh, and therefore contribute to motivating societies by assembling them. And uh, this goes beyond obviously the urban level, but also very much uh, transpires to the region in which uh, a city is placed. Uh, and all of this, um, of course, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moment of celebration during a festival, the celebration uh, of creativity uh, in particular. And uh, I think uh, we have heard it before also from Anders and from the mayor that uh, this, was, uh, this was felt even more uh, during Corona. Uh, uh, and just as one example uh, of what is happening at the European level, uh, you know that uh, the Commission has seen that, for example, it is very important to support uh, sustainable tourism also that fell completely flat during the Corona crisis. Uh, and of course, when you look at the ecosystem of tourism festival, like cultural heritage is, an, uh, is a really um, an important part of what makes tourism uh, an interesting uh, feature uh, for, for the cities that, uh, that are involved and, and an important economic asset, obviously, uh, which is why it's, it's the interest for cities and in particular for festivals in cities really goes beyond my DG, which is the DG, which is responsible for education and culture, but also those that are involved in the internal market and the support uh, to the industry, uh, uh, and um, and the 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 best example for this is of course also that uh, we are now engaged uh, in uh, debate about the new European Bauhaus. Uh, you have heard about it uh, last month. We have uh, we have had a discussion um, with the committee of the region with whom. Uh, the Commission is very much engaged at the moment where there's loads of mayors, of course, uh, and uh, we have engaged a conversation about the new European Bauhaus initiative, which is about living together and in a, building a living environment for citizens. And in this conversation, for example, just uh, as, uh, as, uh, as an example, we have talked also with mayors from the so-called innovation capitals that the European Union awards, but most importantly with, the, with mayors of European capitals of culture, which is one of the flagship initiatives that my program, the Creative Europe program, uh, supports uh, and the European capitals of culture show very, very well how uh, how the, the development of a city uh, is actually linked to its cultural development and what and what the advantages and the benefits for a, a city can actually be if it invests in culture. Uh, and I think one of the most prominent, uh, one of the pros most prominent examples for this is obviously festivals. Uh, and I can share with you that you, throughout these discussions also uh, on the ecosystems and the importance of sustainable tourism, which as Anders rightly said, you know, this is where we hopefully will be going to, and this is the interest also of the European Commission. But it shows very much how festival also in my experience and in your experience, I'm sure as well, actually creates ownership for citizens uh, and uh, leads 
leads to cultural participation and cultural participation is what we know is important in Europe and for its values to be able to be shaping individual skills and individual growing and in fine therefore also societal development so cultural participation is very strongly enshrined also in our European policy work that we have together with member states uh, and it's also very highly mentioned or very much stressed, let me put it that way, in what is called the new European agenda for culture, where it is clearly seen that culture can have this role, this social dimension. Uh, and I think that uh, festivals really uh, are, are a perfect, uh, a perfect uh, example of where this is actually happening. If you, if you look at the city image or at the city branding that can build on such a festival, bringing people from the outside together with the people that live in the city and the region, this is actually always a, a very beautiful uh, thing to see. And of course, also has an economic impact as, uh, as you rightly said. So um, we have heard about uh, Corona and, uh, and the, the, the very harsh impact that it has had on tourism, on, uh, on the arts, and in particular on festivals, depending, of course, on life encounters that were for the most part of Europe not possible lately, which is why you may know that the Commission has announced in March that uh, it will be working on uh, the support to, to guide the reopening of venues and festivals are, of course, uh, concerned in that respect also in a very strong way. We're looking also together with the European Parliament at how we can contribute to greening uh, and creating uh, um, cultural events that are more sustainable, which is in line with what we do as a cross-cutting issue at the European level, contributing to the European uh, Green Deal. So I think you can see that there are uh, a lot of links between uh, the European level and the local level. It's of course also a challenge because this is uh, the cities uh, and, 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 and the smaller cities, of course, are the, are the smallest element uh, when it comes to European integration, but uh, a fundamental one where the, 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 the first level of cooperation and networking is actually happening. And I can reiterate that this is of course also the case for those that are involved in festivals and are, uh, are also part of course of what the European Festival Association is doing, the networking of festivals and the cities hosting them. And uh, one more little message, because I'm already going beyond my time, is that of course I'm responsible for the Creative Europe program uh, and we will, we will continue also supporting this kind of cross-border cooperation and this kind of networking. And, uh, and of course, we will continue also supporting festivals where organizations and festivals decide to work together because we believe that there is really the, the humus that will, that will make for Europe's future. So therefore, I really uh, welcome uh, the, the steps of the European Festivals Association to strengthen this relation. And, uh, and of course, I'm curious to hear about the results of the brainstorm that you will have today and uh, next month uh, on the 22nd of June, uh, we will meet together in a round table with EFA, with European Commissioner Maria Gabriel, uh, and we will be able to exchange uh, also on uh, what you have been discussing today. So I wish you a very good continuation of your workshop and sorry if I'm slightly long by my enthusiasm, please forgive me. Thank you very much, Barbara, and this is absolutely forgiven because I think with this interest and with this mandate in our backs, in our flags uh, of our ship that we are sailing today here to this workshop, uh, we are even more motivated. And you mentioned so many different topics 
that of course such a festival seal, a festival city seal can incorporate. So uh, it was a lot of food for thought I think we can take up in the different breakout groups, in particular in the second part of the meeting. Thank you very much and we are looking forward indeed to share the results with you after the workshop as well as with Commissioner Gabriel at the end of next month. Thanks a lot for being here. I would like now uh, to hear from you for the first time, all participants. What we do now is what we call a little icebreaker. We are going to invite us all into five minutes, very small breakout groups uh, and uh, allow us for ourselves to introduce us to each other. Not in plenary, this is taking too much time, but just to five colleagues you will share the next five minutes with. Which means that there is no moderator in your room, there is no um, uh, agenda for this five minutes, except to speak up, mute, unmute yourself, introduce yourself to each other, and then we are automatically after five minutes brought back to plenary. I hope Hello. Hello. Uh, Inga Arlevi, where do you come from? Germany? No, I come from Sweden. Um, Sweden. I live on the island of Gotland. But I'm, um, I'm the coordinator of all certified cultural routes of the Council of Europe. And okay. I'm the president of the Hansa. Nice to meet you. Nele, you're muted. You should unmute yourself if you want okay. to speak. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Nele, Nele Hartling. I'm from Berlin. I'm uh, in Berlin at the moment. And uh, today I present here another initiative called A Soul for Europe, which um, is an initiative uh, really believing in the need of cooperation, in the need of um, a dialogue between art, culture and politics uh, for the process of a better development of Europe. That's in principle our belief, and uh, we are based, all of us, on the um, conviction that art and culture are one of the most important partners in this process. Thank you. I'm just going to introduce myself very quickly. My name is Audrey Brizak, and I'm working for the European Festivals Association, so part of the organization of this workshop, and uh, maybe I'm going to give the word very quickly to Sofia, and then after Levan can introduce uh, yes. himself. Yeah, also very quickly, I'm Sofia. I'm an intern at the European Festival Association. I come from Spain, and yeah, I'm very happy to be here at this workshop. Hello, everybody. My name is Levan Hetaguri. I'm from Georgia. For this moment, I'm representative of EFA, EFA program in Caucasus. And because Georgia is, is located uh, and it's a real crossroad for Europe and Asia, we are working now for Eurasian cooperation between cities, festivals, and so on. And correct me if uh, I'm wrong, uh, you are going to host the Forum of Cultural Roots this autumn. Uh, you mean in Georgia? In yes. Georgia, yeah. Yes, this is program of Ministry of Culture, yeah. yeah. As you are involved in some cultural routes, I think. Yes, we are working on some specific uh, project, which we call the special program dedicated to Gurdjieff. And with Pilisi municipality, we are working on Gurdjieff roads in city. Okay. And you are also a member of the Soul for Europe in the Yes, show. sure. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time. Yes. And Inger, um, if you wish to take the floor at the end of the workshop, during the conclusion, I know that we wanted to give the word to uh, somebody from uh, Cultural Roots. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's somebody else representing the organization today. Um, Catherine wrote to Miguel uh, as uh, the Cultural route he represents um, uh, Charles V. They have organized quite a few webinars. Um, but he, um, he asked me to, to do this as I'm the coordinator of all routes. Uh, okay. okay, great. So would you like to take the word at the yeah, end? I, or? Can do, I can do okay, it. I perfect. say a few words about what it is because uh, 
well, it's not really related to festivals, but it's a, yeah. it's a quality the, concept for cultural tourism. The, the idea also, I know that there's just like 40 seconds left, um, because now we're going to speak a bit about the Festival City seal. Mm -hmm. And it would be also um, to say what, how this seal could benefit to your organization and why, well, why and why it, well, why it can be interesting, for example. Um, okay, so great. Yeah, yeah, and you can ask me questions if you, you like, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Okay, I will let know Christina and Catherine then. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going back in the main room in 10 seconds. So see okay. you back there. Nice to see you. Thank you. See you. Right, nice see you later. Here we are. This is so brutal. I know. In the middle of the sentence, we are interrupted and we are brought back to this room. Welcome back. I hope you have some glance and glimmer of those that are here with us in the room uh, and share the next hour and a half uh, together. I'm now giving the floor to the moderator of today's session, which is not me, but Christina. Whenever it gets serious in IFA's meetings, I have to give the floor to Christina and help me. Uh, Christina Farinha is one of, I think, the most knowledgeable cultural, uh, creative and creative sectors policy experts. Uh, and I feel really so privileged, Christina, to have you with us in these cities conversations and in our work between festivals and cities. Uh, and I give, all of us into the safe hands of uh, your brain, your mouth, your heart, your soul. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure uh, to be again among uh, festivals and cities and alongside with you, Catherine, and all the speakers uh, today. Um, we longed for a presential meetup in Bergen and after so many online meetings we held last year. It could not yet be this time, but very soon to be because we are all eager to get together for real. Uh, yet the digital has been actually a great enabler uh, for these conversations to take place and reach out to many more all across the world. So many and uh, so diverse would never be possible physically. Uh, we should also see it at this light. Um, indeed, already for three years, the Festival Cities Alliance is under construction. Um, it is my job now to, to guide you very briefly uh, through our joint path until now. Uh, so city and festivals uh, representatives uh, started coming together at the initiative of the European Festival Association, so nicknamed IFA, uh, in 2018 and 19. Um, in Ljubljana, uh, then Lisbon, Brussels, Berlin. Um, then the pandemic locked us in and uh, prevented us from traveling, uh, yet the festival uh, cities conversations kept on uh, and, as I said, actually intensified and were joined by various festivals uh, and city representatives, networks and all interested uh, stakeholders and individuals. Last year, uh, we have held uh, five interactive uh, webinars from May to July, plus two preparatory workshops in the autumn that culminated in the Berlin conference in November uh, 2020. These conversations have thrown light on the challenges and the ways ahead and how to put arts and arts festivals at the, art, at the heart of cities' recovery policies, preparing festivals and cities for a renewed position in citizens' lives. Um, we discussed how to connect and develop new partnerships for festivals uh, and cities uh, to other policy areas. Uh, sustainable cultural tourism, that Barbara Gessler has just mentioned, is crucial uh, after the pandemic. Inclusion and well-being as well, uh, and other industries. Um, another relevant and transversal topic uh, was the contribution and responsibilities of festivals and cities towards the European project. So this is an issue that IFA has been developing uh, together with one of its partners, uh, the Soul for Europe initiative, looking into how to highlight the European dimension that is intrinsic to our cities and festivals, but often invisible, that we are not that aware of. Um, so what can be done to realize the European project bottom up uh, within a new culture of common responsibility? This was the topic of last Berlin conference from which resulted an action agenda that was endorsed by cities and festivals. 
And beyond the, the Soul for Europe initiative, for these conversations to take place, many other partners and speakers were directly involved throughout last year. I will name just a few to take advantage also to thank them. Uh, we had the cities of Bergen, uh, Belgrade, Krakow, Rome, Clermont-Ferrand, Ghent, the Eurocities Network. We had festivals uh, such as Adelaide, the Fringe Festival, the Edinburgh International Festival, the festivals Edinburgh, and Sound Festival in Krakow, uh, the Singapore International Festival of Arts, the Festival der Regionen from Austria. But we also had the speakers, the KIA, uh, European Affairs, the European Travel Commission, the cultural roots of the Council of Europe, members of the European Parliament, the president of the European Economic and Social Committee, the Festival Cities Network, Adelaide. So in these conversations, uh, cities clearly have expressed an interest to be close partner of IFA in the development of a festival cities label and their commitment to work co collaboratively uh, on a festival cities agenda. So this was our path, uh, our crossing uh, during 2020. And in 2021, today, uh, building on this path, uh, we are announcing something new. So a steering group of seven cities, uh, Bergen, Belgrade, Edinburgh, Ghent, Ljubljana, Krakow and Rotterdam are proposing the Festival City Seal, a program, a label that will distinguish um, while promote cities and its festivals. Um, the initiative aims to develop exchanges uh, between different layers, including cities, audiences, artists and other involved players, based on a common set of endorsement action plan. The Festival City Seal includes a recognition, a commitment, but an invitation as well towards all sorts of organized local and regional territories, be it cities, towns, regions, villages, with the festival life or then with a vision to develop a festival life. And that wish to associate and embed their development and image into a strong cultural commitment. Um, with the belief, of course, that their festivals are effective and are valuable platforms that serve the ambition to use the arts and artists as vehicles for community and urban and economic development. So, uh, introduction is made. Uh, the story so far of the festival's uh, city conversation is told. Let's explore this new chapter that is the seal, the festival city's seal. Um, and our workshop is precisely meant to discuss this seal. So let's get some input uh, for our joint thinking and discussion uh, by collecting a series of viewpoints that inform the seven cities in their proposal to us. It will be 30 minutes, a block of presentations. Uh, so please, uh, you may use the chat for all your questions and comments. They are viewed, uh, replied. Uh, we can also go back to them on the breakout groups. Otherwise, they will be collected and, and followed up. Um, so we start uh, with the project partners that actually provided the basis for the seal, building its framework uh, from different perspectives, from research, political and technological uh, perspectives. And they will be presenting uh, the results of their work uh, and expertise. So uh, I will start uh, with uh, the academic point of view. And we will have uh, the pleasure to, to, to have with us um, uh, Peter Inke from the director of the, of the Budapest um, Observatory uh, uh, and also some, some Puriopi, a research trainee at IFA. They have uh, developed a survey targeted to festivals and cities uh, and regions um, that uh, intended to uh, question uh, what are the joint interests and ventures that are already taking place between cities and festivals and why it might be interesting uh, to launch such a seal. Uh, such a seal. Uh, and Sampo has also produced a study that is about the added value of local branding. So we will hear briefly from them. The floor is yours. Peter and, uh, and Sampo. Thank you. Uh, well, you said that was uh, the academic part. Well, it was, it was an academic survey, but it was a very practical thing. Before we come out or before the project uh, goes forward, we were curious about the scene, how, how really festivals think about the relationship between festivals and their 
settlements, cities, villages, and regions. So that was the basis of the, of the survey. Uh, uh, when we have a survey, we are always looking for something which surprises you, which is new, because just to, to get back the, the same uh, knowledge that you already knew it beforehand, it's not of much interesting. However, this few minutes do not allow me to tell uh, these surprising uh, findings of the festival of the survey. But luckily, if you go to the EFA site on the home page, on the front page, in the middle, you can find the result with diagrams and pictures. So 178 festivals responded in the middle of winter, in the middle of pandemic, and I'm grateful to all of them. They came from various corners of Europe, east and west, north and south. And this also reflected some of the interesting uh, differences between east and west and north and south. That is what you can find them in the mentioned uh, uh, survey uh, report. Uh, we hope that when the seal comes alive, when this community of cities, festival cities will be active, then this kind of information will be uh, shared daily and not just at the intervals when a, when a survey is done. Uh, it's always, it always gives comfort when you find similarities, when you see that colleagues in far away countries do have the same challenges as you. But really what is interesting and, and, and stimulating when you find differences. And just let me quote just two or three of these. We were really surprised how much, even more than we had previously known, uh, the well, the how to say I wouldn't call rich countries, but the the Western and Northern countries rely less on public support, and they can rely more on the contribution of of uh, uh, of the uh, uh, visitors. Also, we were surprised to see how in Italy and in the Iberian uh, uh, peninsula, festivals are really close to the, to the cities, more than elsewhere. So there, this bond is, seems to be more uh, organic, structured than elsewhere. And here you can see a diagram when people, when the festivals were asked about their impacts, their, their most important effects. And first of all, they, of course, emphasized that they are branding their cities. So where a, a city has a festival, it adds to the dimension, to the name, to the, uh, 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 well, to brand of the, of the city. But as you can see, the spread is rather broad. So the festival organizers are conscious about the great variety of the impact that they have. Just to see that on the second and the third uh, places, what they found are two things which are very, very distant conceptually. Very much the local trade. So the festivals know that they are important for the local tradesmen, the caterers, the uh, hotels and so on. But also, they are conscious about the international connectedness that they help for the cities to thrive. My time is off, so I give the screen over to Sampo. Yes, thank you, Peter. Um, as a confirmation, if you can hear me, please nod. Implication, thank you very much. Um, okay, so Audrey, if you could share the slide, please. Let me, let me say that we cooperated, that Sampo's project was not different from the survey. It was connected to the survey. Yeah. So uh, to kind of uh, do a little catch up. So um, in the survey that Peter launched, there was a, uh, an open answer category where festival people could describe their collaborations with authorities. Um, aside of that, I had a six month research period um, in the IFA. So basically my task was to monitor a document and then analyze the development of the festival finder platform. 
And I will quickly talk about that um, six month research period, which in the end um, got uh, into the branding of, of Festival Finder. So the method that I used was ethnographic, meaning I, I documented meetings and made categories. And in the end, it was grounded theory where the categories were coded into more specific forms based on the content of the, uh, on what the participants said or expressed. Uh, these meetings included some for Project Alive of the Festival Finder, uh, particularly the cities and country uh, working groups, so call them strands. Um, also some for a Soul for Europe uh, and other conferences, including ones for Creative Europe, uh, OECD and others. Um, Peter's uh, survey was a major influencer of this research, but there was another report uh, commissioned by Ernst and Young Consulting uh, that affected significantly um, the research process. And in the end, there was about some uh, 50 meetings in the span of six months and some 150 page observations, which uh, I then put in tables. Next slide, please. And uh, the results here were um, quite plentiful. However, in the time span that we have, um, it's not enough to describe them thoroughly, but we'll be able to share the results with anyone interested. Um, next slide, please. Um, what I did find was some implications for the future of the festivalfinder.eu. And these implications, of course, correspond to um, what we'll be discussing later further on. Um, so one that the development of the Festival Finder and its seal, the, the brand, pretty much, uh, those criteria in the brand are key to its quality. And according to many people present in the meetings, the criteria are a demonstration of value. So they need to showcase what the brand can do. Um, there was a very interesting idea put forth to develop a, a kind of a training program for the brand. So um, entities, for example, cities that would like to receive or uh, aspire for the brand, they could uh, attend in this program. And that would, of course, give some recognition, visibility, but of course, an opportunity to develop the program further itself, kind of a, an ongoing education process that would um, give uh, content for the brand further on. Um, a very interesting point was that cities and other entities should be able to align their policies in the criteria and the brand. Of course, there needs to be connections in what the cities want to do and what the brand will showcase. Uh, and one very important theme in this was sustainability in terms of networks, in terms of cooperation, in terms of um, implementing policies on a local level, uh, sustainability carries it further on uh, a major role. And one index that I found that could be integrated into the, the criteria was called GDX, or the Global Destination Sustainability Index. So this is currently in a development stage uh, to be integrated into the criteria. Um, there are increased opportunities within EU programs that go outside culture. So outside of Creative Europe, for example, Horizon Europe and New European Green Deal um, can offer major opportunities for cultural incentives, but also for cities to anchor into culture and then expand into, let's say, digitization or environmental themes, uh, diversity, etc. So the increased opportunities are there, but our brand needs to consider them. And finally, uh, the message is that the cities decide the content they want to be displayed on festivalfinder.eu. So uh, the platform is not dictating anyone to do this or that. It's only giving uh, hints on, on how you could maybe achieve better cooperation model. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Peter and Sampo. It's always good to have uh, now data and a reflection to demonstrate the relevance of the branding, but also the, the already existing bounds between uh, cities and festivals. Um, so uh, I will now uh, move on uh, to the political and European point of view. Uh, uh, Nell Hertling, uh, the sp a spokesperson of the Sofa Europe, um, she's here with us and she will tell us uh, how can a festival city still be interesting as a process beyond the branding. So how can it be also uh, and contribute uh, uh, to an exercise of collectivity, uh, be part of a broader political agenda, putting arts and culture at the center uh, of the European process. Nella, the floor is yours. 
Uh, you already mentioned several times the initiative of Soul for Europe, and I am more or less here today as a kind of representative of that uh, initiative. Um, it's the initiative of Soul for Europe exists already since uh, the year 2004 um, and is based on the shared conviction that it is necessary to work on the European process in a joint, mostly bottom-up process between civil society and politics grounded on the creative power of art and culture. This initiative has from the beginning of its activities and debates been closely connected to the important European project, European Capital of Culture. And we are still um, active in connection to several cities in the um, application process and especially taking care about the European ex as, um, aspect of that program, which sometimes is not so clear in the beginning of an application process. Of course, uh, Cultural Capital of Europe is in many ways also a festival. So we became a natural partner with festival cities, trying to support each other in a joint effort on different levels of action and debate and of course, there's many more partners in Europe and abroad. This cooperation is built on the belief that festivals and including the cultural capitals have the great chance to offer, you know, the great chance to address citizens, not only as audiences for artistic events, but to develop offers and formats of participation on different levels and to engage citizens in an ongoing process of urban and European development. European cultural capitals and festivals can support the process of empowerment of local people and structures, and at the same time stand for the recognition of the responsibility of cities and regions for the development of Europe. What we need more than ever today, being so seriously influenced by the worldwide pandemic, is a deeper knowledge about each other across all borders. And of course, we can already see a dangerous development of less having less international cooperation because of the medical and political development. And um, we have to fight against dangerous nationalism, anti-democratic and even anti-Semitic movements recognizing our responsibility for a world in which everybody can live in, in peace and freedom. And festivals and ECOX have a big role in that. Festivals can help to create curiosity and tolerance toward the others. They offer the chance of diverse meetings, of communication and cooperation, of exchange, not only on the artistic ground, they can encourage citizens to become active in a needed process of a Europe bottom up. There are many different formats and practical examples, as for instance, working with schools and universities to reach the important next generation, mentorship programs and ongoing exchange between different networks and other initiatives and institutions, to collect and share questions and solutions and propose challenging food for thought. There's also a serious dialogue, and this is a main point in our activities, a serious dialogue with political decision makers on local, national and European level to build an effective partnership and to convince our political partners about the importance and necessity of art and culture for our societies. This all is an ongoing process into which as much participation from all sides of society is needed. And we, from our initiative, we are convinced it also needs our souls. I'm sure the new proposal developed by some cities to create, a, to create an FSC will be a very strong tool to support and develop all the ideas, visions, and projects that are already in discussion and in active realization between all of you, festivals, cities, artists, politicians, and the citizens. What I today can offer is the engaged cooperation with our initiative, A Soul for Europe, and its so-called strategy group, 
all experienced individuals from many European countries. We developed and practiced formats of workshops, lectures, dialogues between politics and civil society, art and culture, forums and conferences to accompany and support the joint efforts in this ongoing working process. I can only hope that many cities and festivals will join this creation of a seal for festival cities and we are happy to be part of that. Thank you and I wish all of us a lot of success and a positive development. Thank you. Thank you, Nella, for your work uh, in lighting the intrinsic Europe that exists in cities and festivals and how the seal can contribute to promote the European values. Um, now, finally, uh, the technological point of view. So how to embed the seal in a user-friendly, innovative way uh, using latest technologies. So together uh, with uh, um, our technological partner, Public, uh, the project is developing a way to spread and allow uh, access to cities' cultural life uh, worldwide through new digital methods. So I will give the floor uh, to Bart Temmerman, the General Director of Public. Hello, Bart. Thank you, Christina. Hi. Uh, hello, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here uh, amongst all these seasoned festival um, experts. I'm, I'm Bart. Um, uh, I look forward to festivals this summer. I hope, I guess you do too. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, um, it's, it's a pleasure. We, we're, we're a technical partner in this uh, Festival Finder project. We are a not-for-profit organization, um, but we're a technical player. And um, I guess, Gert, you are going to share uh, two, three uh, slides uh, with everyone. Yeah, we may, we may move to the next one. So what we do is uh, we, we run a, a platform and, and that platform is based on event information as, as we call it, core value units. And um, we do that to stimulate the cultural participation. Uh, we run uh, several programs on top of the platform. Uh, one of them is, uh, is Uit in Vlaanderen, which you see in the center. It's, it's the all over uh, agenda for everything that is uh, that's happening in in Flanders and and Brussels. It's a complete agenda, uh, but we also built on top of that inform information uh, a number of programs. Um, we, we we are running a program on loyalty and discounts for cultural participation in sixty seven uh, cities uh, now, and we also run uh, subscription models. For example, the Museum Pass Museum, where you pay once and you the whole uh, you can go to more than two hundred museums as much as you want during the year. All the information, both the event information and all the interactions with the users, we store them. Uh, first of all, we provide the users with their cultural profile uh, when they participate, but also we use all that information both for marketing purposes as well as, as research. So that's, that's what we do. Um, for uh, concretely in, in, in Flanders, we get uh, information from more than almost 30,000 organizers on a yearly basis. It's, it's around 250,000 activities. We all store them together. It's of course free of charge. Uh, it can be done online by anyone. And then uh, with all the events um, on the next slide, we, um, we power it in London, which is our, our event uh, portal, uh, where we also uh, specifically provide information to youngsters and to children uh, or families with children. And uh, we don't we not only use that information for our own channels, but we, we, we send out the information through uh, open data, five star open data. We provide the uh, information to more than 1000 partner channels. And these are the, 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 these, the cities. Um, websites, um, uh, almost all cities in Flanders are, are partners. We also use it for tourist information. The media uh, publish the information. It's used in education uh, context, as well as a lot of membership organizations that integrates the calendars from uh, this database. Now the Festival Finder project uh, specifically, uh, what we're going to do there is um, we are uh, basically, we created uh, together with IFA uh, uh, a specific API where all the international festival uh, information can be entered through. It will be processed uh, in, in our database uh, and have it a specific festival finder tag. So we can like publish or spit it out again as, uh, as widgets 
festival finder widgets that can be integrated and they will be integrated um, with our uh, test partner uh, Bergen, but also on the festival finder website. And uh, hopefully uh, some of you may also want to um, publish festival finder widgets with a, a selected set of information about, uh, about festivals. Now um, on the next slide, I think I have a, uh, yeah, this, this may be, uh, the output, but of course it can be reordered, can be changed colors. But the idea is that in such a festival finder widgets, you can look for uh, the festivals, you can look for uh, where for location, timing, but also types, genres, uh, even the price uh, of the the the, uh, the individual events that make uh, make a festival. So this is the current uh, a, a current a current idea of what it may become, but we are still uh, working it on it. A specific uh, extra that we um, will provide during the project is, is an editorial tool. And the idea here is that uh, journalists or editors, if they write, write articles about events, about festivals, they can use a, an embed code, uh, which will automatically add the, the exact and the, the, the right information about the event and the festival within the article. If you click on it, you will be transferred to the uh, detailed event page on, uh, on, on, the, on the website uh, with all the events and the festivals. But also for people that are browsing through the agendas, uh, once they get on a detailed event page, as you will see on the next slide, they will be uh, linked back to the, to the article. So any of the event pages will uh, reference the press articles, the media articles that have been written about the festival and the specific events. So as such, we want to uh, enable a kind of interworking be between, uh, between the different media. Uh, they will get more audience uh, on their website, which is in the end, I think, their goal. And uh, people will discover events from the different articles that appear in the media. So let's find out where it works. Uh, I hope this may scale to a European partnership uh, over time. Uh, so let's let's have the audience discover festivals and cooperate between EFA, uh, the festivals, media and ourselves. I think it's a win-win model. Let's try. Thank you. Thank you, Bart, uh, for convincing proposal. Uh, we are in good hands. So uh, also thank you to all the, the, all the speakers of the three perspectives, the research, the political and the technological. And now we will keep on with inspirational inputs. Uh, but now two examples of uh, content uh, uh, that the SEAL process can zoom into. So our cities can use this network that is actually materialized in the SEAL uh, to share and hear from each other's good ideas and practices, but also what such a city's community can do uh, and how uh, to recognize itself in certain values and perspectives. Um, so uh, we will first uh, of all uh, uh, hear uh, uh, from Hesta van der Werf uh, um, from uh, um, Friesland um, and she, uh, uh, the Learning Hub Friesland, project manager and initiator. Uh, and she will tell us an example how the SEAL can bridge to education. Uh, they have developed a Culture uh, United project uh, together with Edinburgh Municipality and Unique Events and Hester uh, will tell us all about it. Hester, the floor is yours. Thank you and thank you for inviting us here. Uh, really nice to be here. Um, yeah, well, indeed, first I also like to introduce uh, Alan Thompson from Unique Events and David Waddle from the Municipality of Edinburgh. And I also saw Sarah Dali uh, uh, here today from Creative Spark, and they all work together on this really cool project, which is called Culture United. Uh, it is a three year European Erasmus funded project that uses cultural heritage festivals and festivals um, as a driving force for the inclusion of multidisciplinary teaching methods in primary schools, secondary schools, and other education uh, organizations. Um, and actually, I uh, have a little bit of a clip or a movie that explains it really well. So uh, I'd like to show that, but I hope that it's ready now. So I'm not sure how to, who to ask. Great. Culture United is a European partnership project uh, delivered between four partners in Edinburgh in Scotland, Olu in Finland, Leowarden in the Netherlands and Dundalk in Ireland. 
What it does is it creates partnerships between unique cultural events and education providers to deliver multidisciplinary learning in schools. One of the things that my team's always aiming to do is to engage really meaningfully with pupils and teachers and to have live experiences is a really powerful way of doing that. Edinburgh was the um, first of the partners to deliver their um, activity um, through the project. And the project had come about because it was responding to an Erasmus Plus funding call um, led by uh, a team in Leeuwarden in the Netherlands. Our hometown of the uh, uh, city of Leeuwarden in 2018 was the capital of culture in, uh, in Europe and we had some really big performances in the city like the, uh, the giants of Royal, Royal Deluxe, a group from, from France came over to our city and we noticed that uh, little kids, children, they were really uh, impressed by all of this and even in the, week, the weeks afterwards they were still making uh, drawings uh, out of it and then we thought uh, well we should really do more with it and, and bring this into formal ed education connect festival theaters musical big cultural events with uh, primary education and that, that's how we basically uh, got the idea we were able to involve four schools in this project which is great um, four schools that wouldn't normally meet and they got to know each other, they learned together and they learned about each other and they also formed friendships of their own accord um, which is lovely. At the start we were very very reserved about collaborating with other schools, getting to know new kids, uh, so that took us a little while to kind of have a little bit of thinking time on what, what it is that we are getting involved in. Once we had our first workshop and they saw what it was all about and then we met with all the other schools, we made that network between us. Uh, it, it just kind of flourished from there. So I think this, uh, this gave you a clear idea about uh, what Culture United is about. Um, and that is what we do with our, uh, our corporation, Learning Up Friesland. We help those active in education realize international ambitions. And we do that through European projects, mainly connecting culture and events to education and other fields. Uh, and we're really happy to have several municipalities working together on that, who also see the value of uh, the crossover from culture and events to, by example, education, or, but also care uh, and other fields of business. Um, so I would like to give the floor to uh, Al Thompson from Unique Events uh, to give you a little bit of the event organization perspective. Thank you, Hester. Um, it's so nice to see that footage. It seems like so long ago since we actually were able to hold that event. but. Um, for Culture United, it's, it's provided us with a, an opportunity to create a whole new strand to our festival programme, and that is connecting with schools throughout Edinburgh. Um, and for us, you know, that, that provides us not only additional content in terms of programme, but it allows us to work through with different partners and local authority, um, creates funding opportunities for us to, to deliver that with that, but also on a kind of festival level, it allows us to engage directly with the next generation of festival goers and, and how we can encourage that connection um, for them to engage with the festivals that are taking place in the city. Um, as you saw from the footage, that, that comes through a series of workshops that we have where pupils engage directly with professional artists through music and songwriting and dance and creative writing. And again, the results of that have been through extending skills, not only through the curriculum, but also in their social skills through interacting with, with different schools that are taking place. So one of the outcomes of that from our side is that we are creating a toolkit and a guide, which will show a kind of step-by-step -step process of how we, we are encouraging others to do that. And, and many of the big festivals, and certainly here in Edinburgh, have very successful large educational programs that they can sustain through year out. But for us as a smaller festival, it's about encouraging others to do that and, and understanding the benefits that go with that. But certainly being part of Culture United and connecting with our, our new colleagues and friends across Europe has been a, a huge benefit to what we've been doing. And we look forward to speaking more about that. 
Thanks. And as we uh, only have four minutes, I'll uh, wrap it up. Uh, but if you are interested in the toolkit that Al was referring to, we are very happy to send it to you as soon as it's uh, ready or include you otherwise uh, in the project. And I see Audrey kindly uh, put the link in the chat. So uh, yeah, you can always reach out if you want to join somehow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Esther um, and uh, Alan, uh, for a very relevant project, a European one, also coming out of Leeuwarden, uh, the European capital of culture, in 2018. Um, so now another example on how to use the SIL. Uh, uh, it will be now presented by Raritza Sprenka, a program director at the Cultural Center uh, in Cluj, um, on the topic of uh, the impact of arts and culture on well-being and inclusivity and the role of a city. Raritza, the floor is uh, yours. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm really happy to be here and draw in some of our experience with you. Um, the topic of the re relation between culture and well-being is on on our agenda as a cultural center connected to the to to the city of Cluj um, for already for some years. But I think, as you all guess now, it has uh, become much more relevant. So the the, the long list of arguments that we were uh, ne needed to provide some years ago for for the importance of this, this topic is not necessarily needed anymore. One thing that I would stress is that, as, as Barbara Gessler said, is already uh, also an important subject on the agenda of the European uh, Agenda for Culture. Uh, just briefly for the beginning, to give you some examples of the work that we do in Cluj, uh, we have recently uh, done a pilot project on, um, on uh, working with uh, cultural intervention for people with burnout. And uh, we have uh, followed the entire process with, with uh, robust research and we had uh, amazing results. Like all the people participating in the program had decreased their burnout rates from high scores to low and medium scores. We are now working on a participatory design process for um, a space for arts and well-being in one of the public schools in Cluj, a project that we uh, hope to be able to scale up and multiply later on with the municipality in other schools. And we are currently working on a on, um, form of an electronic voucher for well-being uh, for, for people that um, it, it's, it's a system of assigning participation to cultural events together with a, an assessment of the emotional state of the of the people and hopefully that in the later phases of the projects we are able to connect that to medical institutions and and be them um, delivered uh, at the recommendation of uh, of physicians or psychologists um, throughout the city now uh, we have invested a lot of energy in in research being aware that although there is a lot of evidence about the impact of culture on well-being maybe the arguments are not necessarily strong enough for the um, i think that there are uh, there is a lot of clinical evidence uh, there is not so much research done on on city scale uh, projects and this type of, uh, of evidence is needed in order to convince decision makers on, on the possibilities that, that, are, uh, that are there. And um, one, one uh, thing besides, you know, the very, very specific uh, health related benefits that, that cultural participation and especially active cultural participation, and you are all aware that there is this difference between getting engaged directly creatively, just as we've seen with the previous um, uh, project that is related to, to education and participation and receptive or passive uh, cultural participation. And there is increased evidence on how engaging directly with us, like dancing, singing, is, is doing good for you and doing good for communities. And, um, and besides that, for us, it was important to connect something that in the cultural sector we know quite well, that culture has a, intrinsically contributes to, um, to personal significance, to meaning. And, and this type of value of culture we know is connected to actually how people connect their, um, uh, how people value their own lives, how they, how they see, um, uh, 
how they are satisfied with their life is really con is, is directly connected to the sense of meaning and purposefulness uh, that they um, find in life. And, uh, and for that reason, we, we, we look at four dimensions that, that are proven by, by, um, by research that culture contributes to. And, and one of them is cognitive. So by attending reading books and, and attending uh, cultural events, there's knowledge and there's mental processes that are boosted. But then is also an important emotional contribution. So, uh, and, and we know that not so many of the, of the activities of today's life are able to bring something positive on the emotional side of, of participants. Most of our activity is kind of draining um, psychological energy out of people. And, um, and then the third dimension is social. And again, this is something that we have been talking a lot uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the recent years. And festivals have a lot to contribute to. So um, cultural events not only bring people together, but, but also help them create certain types of con connection um, that are, um, are key for, for psychological uh, and even physical well-being. And then there is also this fourth dimension, which is aesthetical and which is also important for, the, for, for us to, to be connected with this um, good quality of, of life idea. And, um, and you know, there is evidence that certain types of art are contributing more to one of those four dimensions. And, and I think for festivals, the social and, um, and uh, aesthetic dimen emotional di dimension and aesthetical also are, are pretty important. And uh, because I'm aware the time is, uh, is, is rather short, I would just finish with some. Um, in in uh, the project that we are currently car uh, carrying out at the European level is called Art, called Art and Wellbeing. And I will uh, ask my uh, colleague Adela to share the link uh, with you in the chat. Um, this is a Creative Europe uh, funded project. We are also conducting some research and, and providing some rec policy recommendations. Um, you can find them uh, checking the research uh, on on the impact of of COVID uh, to um, uh, uh, on on people's well-being and how culture can contribute to to well-being. And it's really important to see, it, for instance, that our, our respondents from uh, across Europe uh, mentioned that the number one means of coping with emotions in the first weeks of uh, of burnout was cultural participation, social and physical activities came second and third. I think just Italy had uh, cooking on the first place. So <laughs> that's just a cultural, small cultural difference. So among few of the ideas that, that, that can bring cities and, um, and festivals together around this important topic is to create strategies together, so guidelines or projects together. And most importantly, rather inter, intersectoral, cross-sectoral uh, partnerships with the cultural and social sector. And I'm, I'm really aware that the Nordic countries and, and Bergen has also uh, good experiences in this direction. There is this experience of projects called social prescribing. So people are not only prescribed uh, medical treatment, um, but, uh, but also participation in cultural sports and social activities as part of their um, um, uh, recuperation and health consolidation efforts. And, um, and we think that probably this is one of the most promising areas for the future. But also um, we, we think that um, connecting business sector with culture, like especially for festivals, like giving uh, employees vouchers to participate in festivals as, a, as an incentive for well-being. I think that that's quite, uh, quite a good idea. And, and we're also recommending that festivals are documenting the impact they have on people because most of, the, of these results are already there, but they are probably not told, the story is not told from that angle. So we are suggesting, let's tell the story on how we in the cultural sector contribute to people feeling better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Raritza, Thank for, you another, for another very relevant work. And good to know that Cluj is active uh, and develops such an expertise on this crucial link between arts and well-being. 
Uh, thank you again to all the speakers. Uh, um, last but not least, uh, we will have three very brief words from the initiators of the SEAL process and how they already started to use the SEAL. So free cities, uh, free festival cities, Bergen, uh, Krakow and Belgrade, uh, and also three minutes uh, for each of you. Um, so I say hello to Arve Linken uh, from Visit Bergen. Uh, please share with us uh, why and in which ways you would see the seal. And I know that you have a particular interest, of course, on cultural tourism. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christina. Yes, yes, we have. You know, uh, as a convention director for Visit Bergen, the seal is uh, quite important for us, you know, uh, especially post pandemic where we will focus more on the cultural tourism than we have done before. Uh, and it's all about, you know, to make Bergen a good city to visit and also a good city to, to live in. So in a, in a perfect world where the seal uh, is a definition of quality and a well-known certification, the positive sides for us will be uh, a, a shorter and easier buying behavior process. So an example for that is maybe that you all know coffee, uh, if you are, if you want the, the more money to give to the farmer, you buy fair trade coffee, and uh, if not, you buy the then buy the normal coffee. It's it's quite easy to see what you want to buy um, as a as a consumer. Um, but also, what types of tourists do we want? Um, and that, of course, do we want uh, six hundred cruise ships with uh, three thousand people in each, or do we want uh, a really um, uh, really good uh, segment called tourist uh, cultural tourists, and that of course the last one. Uh, and it's also the seal could give uh, safety to consumer, uh, gives more reason to travel to a destination on the festival, uh, especially when we uh, in Norway we're focusing a lot on sustainability, uh, uh, especially when we we try to you know uh, make our brands more sustainable. Um, and of course, the, the bring the brand awareness to the city. Um, and also, I think that the more certified festivals uh, the city will have, the more will come in a process and uh, will lift the quality of the festivals in the region and, and, and our, our city. Um, and that gives us, of course, a stronger uh, brand as a city. Um, and also a positive acknowledgement uh, uh, for festivals to be awarded for a good job they do. Uh, and of course, the network effect, uh, the collaboration effect you get uh, with the SEAL, uh, where you have good talks with other uh, festivals, uh, both in uh, locally, regionally, nationally, and also internationally. It's quite good. Um, and also, um, it's a sustainable way of developing the festival industry. Uh, and as uh, Sam mentioned, uh, the GDS index, uh, I've been in quite a lot involved in that uh, because uh, that was uh, developed by, the, uh, by one of the organizations that I'm in called ICA. Uh, and it's, it's actually a quite good uh, role model for, for this uh, SEAL, actually. Um, and it's not about the pros, it's not about the achievement, but it's the process from year to year. It should, uh, the SEAL should include that. So uh, we would uh, love to have a seal and also use that in all our promotional material. And we love brands. Uh, you know, we, we have UNESCO here. We, we also have other types of brands. So, um, so we, uh, we will use it as much as we, as we, can, we can do. So that's... Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Arve. Uh, and now uh, uh, to Krakow. Uh, Robert Piakowski, uh, advisor for culture of the mayor of the city of Krakow. Uh, together, you have been putting uh, culture high on your agenda. Uh, Krakow is a strong festival city. And now I know that you wish to introduce a festival policy. So uh, you see the seal as a potential long-term platform for improving collaboration among your festivals. Exactly, uh, well said. So uh, hello everyone. I'm very excited because in, today, tonight we start festival season. So from Potomon, so it's a great excitement in all of the festivals industry. But of course, this seal will be very, very helpful to deal uh, with all of the organizers. They tend to be always like separated islands from the, from the city's uh, general policies to integrate the whole se sector to work together on the same values, to be connected with, with European festivals is a constant challenge to us. 
and also to uh, respond to such uh, issues you've been mentioning, like uh, uh, sustainability uh, and GDP goals, uh, to build resilient uh, spaces, to work on the psychological, mental uh, issues, and also to be an important driver for tourism recovery. City has implemented recently and uh, announced the Krakow culture, new policy, new vision, where festivals are the major force for the recovery, uh, uh, regeneration of the tourism industry, but also restructurization, transformation of the tourism the tourists' profile. Because we would like to invest more into the cultural tourism, not being only city for weekends or for fun only, but to come to Krakow to experience its. Uh, deep uh, and, 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 and uh, very rich um, uh, and cultural uh, um, identity and, and offer. So, of course, we would like to see uh, if a seal as a common vision, uh, something we share with partners uh, from all of the Europe, which will uh, help us to strength and, uh, and make festivals more resilient, and will be part also of local um, political decisions, also what festivals uh, contribute to the urban development, social development, innovations, and how they contribute to the, uh, to in building capacity and uh, cultural, symbolical uh, capital of our inhabitants. So I'm really, I'm really in favor, I, I support very much this, and I'm very grateful to F. Katrin Bergen uh, to take this leadership in such an important document. Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you, Robert. Uh, and now uh, from north to south, uh, to the Balkans and to Belgrade, uh, we have already Jovanka Jankovic, uh, the president of the Serbian Festivals Association and also ArtLink. Uh, um, what is uh, the interest of your festival, of your city uh, uh, on this you how comes that you have brought the fortress of belgrade uh, heritage uh, landmark to the conversation and, and to the seal Jovanka, pleasure to have you hello christina hello everyone i'm very happy to be uh, today with you and to share the initiative that uh, we are just uh, now working on uh, i uh, think that um, i can actually start from the motto of art link and this is art needs company i believe that uh, Art and artists, of course, need company. And I believe that uh, cities are the best company of, of the festivals and also our cities. Uh, cities also have their history and they have their cultural history and cultural heritage that actually shows this history. Uh, Belgrade Fortress, as our strategic partner, is the oldest uh, cultural monument of Belgrade. So history of Belgrade is actually the history of Belgrade Fortress. And this is a, an amazing um, opportunity to present uh, our city through this uh, monument of culture of great importance and through this uh, monument uh, to show the cultural history of the city and also to contribute to the cultural tourism. I believe that this seal should actually connect uh, artists and festivals, cultural heritage and cultural tourism and create a, a unique uh, brand and unique uh, innovative uh, presentation of what we all want to, to do and to achieve. And this is not only Belgrade Fortress that is part of our, uh, our focus at the moment. Uh, we are also developing strategy on national level. And now in, in this summer, we are having festival programs at four fortresses in Serbia that are recently uh, restored uh, with the help of European Union. So we have city of Belgrade, Belgrade Fortress, and Novi Sad, which is capital of culture next year. So we have Novi Sad Fortress and two more fortresses in Serbia, Golubac Fortress and Fortress in the city of Pirot. And uh, I hope we will have uh, nice results to share with you in September. And um, I'm looking forward to, to have these results shared with you. So this is from now for us, from us, from Belgrade and the Balkans. Thank you. Thank you, Jovanka. And uh, uh, thank you to the three cities, uh, founders of the SEAL. Um, and also thank you for all of you there uh, listening to us. 
Uh, now it's time to pass on to you, uh, precisely the floor, um, to collect your ideas, uh, views, feedback, uh, hear how such a seal might be a valuable process, but also a product uh, uh, that it is. Um, we have uh, um, actually two questions um, um, to inspire your talks. Uh, what can uh, the festival City Seal mean uh, for your territory and or for your festival? And which values, conditions, criteria should this seal embrace for you to join, to be interested to join? So uh, you will be now divided uh, into buzz groups. Uh, in each group or in each room, uh, there is a moderator and a supporter uh, taking notes. Uh, you will be divided into, uh, I would say, groups of around 10 uh, uh, people um, uh, and you need uh, uh, your active contribution, but also uh, to see your faces. So please uh, switch on your camera. Um, and after the division uh, into bus groups, you can have a five minutes break, deserved break. Um, and then you will have uh, around 25 minutes uh, for the discussion. Um, also for your info, uh, you can mind the time uh, following the clock on the right and top of the screen. Um, and five minutes before the end, uh, the group uh, will receive the message. Uh, so enjoy uh, uh, your break, but also enjoy your discussion afterwards. Yes, it's quite quite brutal being thrown out of these uh, groups. Ballet was just telling uh, us of uh, his project. <laughs> are we all in or are we all back in plenary? Should we keep on? Yes. So uh, thank you uh, for taking part in these conversations. Um, despite the fast pace um, that we need to impose um, um, right after um, you will hear from Katrin uh, how the results of the bus groups will be collected and communicated. Um, uh, and now I, uh, I know that the, we have various colleagues in the room uh, who are working on the importance of stronger links between civil society, arts and the cultural world and local decision makers. So I would be keen to hear them in these last minutes. Uh, how can the community of cities and festivals we bring here together uh, be of interest for you? How do you imagine to contribute to this idea of the seal? So I will ask very quick reactions from the floor, like uh, street survey style, one or two minutes, very spontaneous reactions. I will first address uh, Clementine Dubov uh, from Kia European Affairs. The focus of your work has been to develop cultural agendas of cities. So are, are you interested to follow such a process? Clementine. Many thanks, uh, Christina, and thank you uh, to Eva as well for uh, uh, bringing me into this uh, discussion today. Um, so, I mean, KIA, as you said, has been supporting cities in uh, really tapping into this cultural potential and these cultural resources uh, and also to connect the dots between culture and other sectors and, and the society. So, of course, I mean, uh, on a philosophical level, we are very supportive of the seal and, and I was very uh, interested in the discussions that you had today, especially the aspect of how the festivals can also showcase what culture does for society. And uh, I think somebody mentioned how culture and arts make people feel good or be better uh, and this is uh, this idea of encapsulating all the the values uh, that culture and arts have in our society in our cities um, into a seal uh, is is very interesting and I can only support this um, I found it really interesting also to hear I think taking the idea of uh, that uh, Barbara Gessler mentioned the ecosystem that's also to festivals 
uh, are connected to tourism, sustainable tourism, cultural heritage, the, the communities and the citizens, and also the artists. Uh, and there I would like, yeah, only to, to second uh, what uh, Jovan Kajankovic was saying about this link to connect also the artists, the festival and the cities. So uh, for us, it would be interesting to see where, if, if we can contribute, because KEA also animates a um, network of creative entrepreneurs and maybe how we could bring these people, these creative people in thinking about the seal of thinking about innovative ways to connect the cities and the festivals. Uh, there are practical ways. We talked about the branding quite a lot in the beginning of the discussion. So maybe involving also some people who do that as an activity uh, would be interesting for, for the seal. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and to yeah, help telling this story uh, of how uh, yeah, the seal and the festival and the cities connect through this, uh, this new project. And I think yeah, that was mainly what uh, I took from the discussion. Somebody in the, in the breakout room mentioned uh, how are we being innovative in the way we address our audiences. So all these aspects of being innovative, uh, of connecting and telling the stories, something like artists and creative entrepreneurs do as a regular activity. So I'm sure they could contributes to this so that thank was you. my two takeaways thank yeah thank you uh, now to Tanya Mlaka from Eindhoven uh, you are active in Eurocities can you find this process uh, of the seal useful for the useful for the network Tanya are you there we lost Tanya Christina did we so we move on yes um, we move on to finally Inger uh, Arlevi from the Hansa uh, route uh, and on behalf of the cultural routes of the Council of Europe. Uh, how can the seal contribute uh, to the cultural routes, um, Inga? Well, <laughs> we do not add any new seals to uh, our own logos uh, that um, shows that we are cultural routes certified by the Council of Europe. It's a, a very official label that we have. <clears throat> it's a, a concept, it's a program decided by the, uh, the Council of Europe and the, the Council of Europe decides about certification of new topics uh, to be cultural routes. And uh, then uh, the uh, operative work is uh, done in the, at the Institute in Luxembourg, the, the, um, the European Institute of Cultural Roots, where the staff, all of them are employed by the Council of Europe and uh, the state of Luxembourg hosts them. And uh, there is a, a, a program uh, for how to work with it and with representatives from uh, from the countries involved. Um, it's called enlarged partial agreement where, where member countries of the Council of Europe can, can be, be members. So, I mean, uh, this is how we work. And then uh, we now are 45 certified cultural routes. I can put the, um, the website so that you can see uh, which they are. And for sure, many cultural routes, they have festivals of different kinds uh, related to their topic or art or music or, or culinary festivals or whatever it might be. Um, you are now related in, in, in Bergen and uh, Bergen, for instance, hosted the, uh, the festival of, of the Hansa six years ago, I think, uh, where all member cities comes together to uh, present themselves to the public and also have internal discussions. But uh, so I mean, you can you can see if you can find members uh, among the cultural roots, but uh, uh, that we should add another seal to to what we already have. That's uh, that is not possible. <laughs> but it, thank you. Uh, but it is indeed possible to develop collaborations and cooperation uh, between the the cities, uh, uh, the festivals. Uh, of course, and, and I'm, I mean, in many, many member cities, they have their festivals to, to increase the interest for their route. And the routes, they could be a, a real route that you walk. For instance, the, the uh, pilgrim's route to Santiago de Compostela, that was the first route to be certified. 
or it could be a, a thematic topic as the Hansa, as Vikings, uh, as Impressionist uh, or, or whatever. And um, so th these are two different kinds of, of certified cultural roots. And okay. uh, cooperation is always possible, but no additional seals. <laughs> Thank you, Inger. Uh, and I know that there are also other interested stakeholders in the room uh, and others who are not here, but in conversation with us for some time already on this issue. Um, uh, but indeed, and uh, also from uh, from your input, uh, Inga, uh, I know that uh, um, the, the SEAL seems to me a, a very good platform to materialize the conversations more than actually being a stamp. Uh, um, uh, in, if uh, indeed sees the SEAL also as a platform to dialogue uh, uh, with all the many existing networks and stakeholders uh, doing work already in the field uh, of cities and culture so that you can learn from each other, uh, promote your own initiatives also via the SEAL and make it also a bridge uh, to, to reach out to other relevant stakeholders uh, in the fields of education, tourism, heritage, health, uh, because you, they can also inform and feed this conversation. So I would say this is the spirit of the SEAL, uh, to connect all the forces for the agenda of festivals, that is the agenda of arts and culture, uh, the agenda of cities uh, uh, and Europe. Um, so thank you to all the speakers uh, and also all the participants out there. Um, and now I will pass on to Catherine uh, for closing. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for your time. And everyone, I can only echo what just has been said at the very end. We were today 70 festivals and cities representatives. We had too little time to talk to each other in the breakout groups. It is too rough to be interrupted in such a way that we are pulling back or pushed back into the, into the plenary space. We have been too long on these Zoom meetings and we can't wait to meet each other live and keep on discussing these elements that we discussed today. So many brilliant perspectives, examples and ideas were brought to the table in the framework of indeed a kind of platform um, that the Festival City see should establish. Definitely not to be yet another competitive element in a city's ranges of, of logos, be it an ECOG city, be it a cultural roots platform, be it a UNESCO label for literature, for whatever. I mean, there are so many of them. We do with our humble, I think, initiative of collecting festivals in IFA. We understood that reaching out to those at the local level that are also important uh, to allow citizens to participate in arts and culture for so many different reasons are the cities. And the festival city seal, I think, is not more or less than the expression of that need, I think, for festivals uh, to talk to cities and for cities to embrace the power and the strength of festivals more closely um, in this framework. So we are looking forward to this collaboration with all of you. We are going to follow up and collect all your thoughts into a document, a proposal that we will send to you in the follow up of this meeting of such a text for a festival city seal. And we would be very, very happy, of course, to see, to incorporate, first of all, all your ideas of today and to see and hear from you when you see the draft of that festival city seal to comment back on it. It's a collaborative process and, and we are happy that we embarked on this process together with you. We will also have another meeting, I hope a physical, at least a hybrid meeting in Friuli in Italy on the 2nd and 3rd of September, uh, which will be a, a next rendezvous in which uh, we will discuss the seal in particular from the cultural tourism point of view before the idea is to launch the festival city seal together with you the, the first cities who will embrace it uh, on the 22nd of November in the framework of the arts festival summit in Galway uh, and I'm happy Colin you are here you will be our host hopefully again we will be uh, there physically together and if not again we are going to organize this meeting in a hybrid way so it's a process, we have an agenda, we are meeting back in September and then in November um, and hopefully together with you somehow make this, this idea of a festival city see relevant and useful for festivals and for cities. And I have the feeling after today that there is, that there is some food for thought that we could take up and that we will be able to incorporate in all these brilliant different uh, initiatives that were raised and presented today. So thank you very much. We are seven minutes over time, not too much. But um, uh, if you want to take the floor, go on, please use this, this platform. It's not me to shut it down. We will only close it after the last one. <laughs>
uh, is happy to leave this room. So thank you very much, everyone.